In this video, we are going to talk about the lottery paradox. This is a paradox that comes from some work by Henry Kyberg. So consider a fair lottery with 1,000 tickets and one prize. So there are 1,000 tickets. Each ticket is sold to a different individual. And exactly those tickets are going to, so each individual received a receipt and the other part of that receipt, the ticket, is placed into an urn. And somebody's going to reach in and randomly select one of those tickets. That's how the lottery works. Now, what's the probability that a given ticket will win? Well, that's going to be one out of 1,000. There are 1,000 tickets. Each has the same probability of winning. So the probability that a given ticket will win is 0 0.001. That is one out of a thousand. And the probability that it will not win is 0 0.999. Nine. That is 99.9% .9 chance that it will not win. So 999 out of a thousand. Now surely, this is a quote from Kyberg, surely if a sheer probability is ever sufficient to warrant the acceptance of a hypothesis, this is the case. So should you believe that a particular ticket will win or lose? Well, there's over the, the credence or the chance that that ticket will lose is overwhelming. It's 99.9% .9 chance that that particular ticket will lose. So here's how we arrive at a paradox from this situation. Let WI mean that ticket I will win. So if we write W7, that means ticket number 7 is the one that was drawn from the urn, and that is the winner. So here's our first assumption. For each ticket I, it's rational to have the following credence. The credence in W1 is the same as the credence in W2, which is the same as the credence in, say, W1000 which is equal to 1 over 1,000, or 0 0.001. That is, the credence you attach to ticket I winning the lottery is 0 0.001. And so that means that the credence you attach to a ticket losing, so not W1, is the same as the credence you attach to W2, not winning, so W2 losing, which is the same that you attach to ticket 1,000 losing, is 999 out of 1,000, or 0.999. So that's our first assumption, is that your credence of a ticket winning is 0 0.001, and the credence of an arbitrary ticket losing is 0.999. Assumption two, and this is just the Lockean thesis. Now let's just pick a threshold of 0.8. The threshold doesn't matter very much. It just has to be slightly less than 0.999. So 0.9 would work as well. So for all phi, you're going to believe phi if and only if your credence in phi is greater than the threshold. And here we pick the threshold as 0.8. But as I said, it wouldn't matter. We could use 0.9 or 0.95. Now, our credence in ticket 1 losing and ticket 2 losing and ticket 1,000 losing is all greater than 0.8. So for each individual ticket, the credence you attach to that ticket losing is 0.999, which is greater than 0.8. So according to the Lockean thesis, it is rational to believe the following. You believe that ticket 1 will not win. You believe that ticket 2 will not win. You believe that ticket 3 will not win, and so on, up to ticket 1,000. You believe that ticket 1,000 will not win. However, you are certain that at least one ticket will win. After all, this is a lottery. It's a fair lottery. So you know there will be a winning ticket. So the credence you attach to either ticket 1 winning or ticket 2 winning or ticket 1,000 winning is 1. That's surely above your threshold. So it's rational to believe this disjunction. Either one will win, or two will win, or three will win, or up to uh, ticket 1,000 will win. Assumption three. 
If it is rational to believe phi, and it's rational to believe psi, then it must be rational to believe phi and psi. So since it's rational to believe that ticket one won't win, and it's rational to believe that ticket two won't win, and it's rational to believe that ticket 1000 won't win, and so on, it must be rational to believe that this conjunction is true. That is, it's rational to believe that ticket one won't win, and ticket two won't win, and ticket three won't win, and dot 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 up to ticket 1000 won't win. The last assumption, it is not rational to believe a contradiction. So it is irrational to believe a proposition that is guaranteed to be false. So given the previous three assumptions, we've concluded that it's rational to believe this conjunction, that ticket one won't win and ticket two won't win and so on, up to ticket 1000 won't win. We've also concluded that it's rational to believe at least one ticket will win. That is either ticket one will win or ticket two will win or dot, 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 up to ticket 1,000 will win. But that means it's rational to believe the conjunction of these two formulas. That is, you believe the conjunction that ticket one won't win, and ticket two won't win, and ticket three won't win, and so on, up to ticket 1,000 won't win, while at the same time believing that at least one of the tickets will win. That is, either ticket one will win, or ticket two will win, or dot, 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 up to ticket 1,000 will win. But this formula is a contradiction. This is just a direct contradiction. So we've derived, using assumptions one, two, and three, that you should believe this conjunction. Assumption four says it's not rational to believe a contradiction. Yet, it seems like you, you should, at least assumptions 1, 2, and 3, imply that you should believe, or it's rational to believe, this conjunction. So this is the lottery paradox. The paradox, really, this raises a question, what are the which of the four assumptions should you give up? Should you give up assigning high credence that each ticket will lose? Most people will do not give up that assumption. That assumption is pretty much universally accepted. After all, it's a fair lottery. Each ticket has a low very, very low probability of winning. And so you should ha assign a high cre credence to a particular ticket losing. Should we give up the Lockean thesis? Or maybe give up that it's rational, if it's rational to believe phi and rational to believe psi, then it must be rational to believe phi and psi. Or perhaps we should give up that it's not rational to believe a contradiction. There are some cases, for example, the lottery case, in which it is rational to believe a contradiction. Now, there's one point I want to make, um, which is that you might be worried about the fact that I picked this arbitrary threshold 0.8. You might say in this example, well, I know how to deal with this example. I'll just make the threshold of belief 0.999. So for any threshold you pick, even if the threshold is 0.999, we can construct a lottery that produces the paradoxical result. So if the threshold is 0.999999, then I'll just create a lottery with 10,000 tickets or a million tickets or 10 million tickets. So whatever threshold you pick, you can always construct a lottery that will produce this paradoxical result. Of course, there is one threshold where you can get out of this. Namely, that's the threshold of one. If you, if you only believe things that you assign probab probability one to, then you won't be able to derive the paradoxical result. However, as we've seen, there are problems with setting your threshold to be one. The basic idea is that if you believe something, then you assign credence one to it is much too strong because we believe lots of things that we don't, that we aren't necessarily certain of, that we don't necessarily assign credence one. So this is the lottery paradox. It's an interesting, it's a puzzle that, that, philosophers and logicians have talked about for quite a while. 
Um, there's no received view about how best to resolve the lottery paradox. Some people argue that you should give up the Lockean thesis or different um, parts of the Lockean thesis. Some people argue that rational belief should not be closed under conjunction. And some people argue that it's okay, it's rational to believe contradictions, for example, in the lottery case.